Hello and welcome to episode 2 of Pirate Game Showcase. In this series, I take a look at pirate, pirated games or unlicensed games, games that uh, you probably wouldn't be able to pick up just at your local store, but um, are all over the place in mainland China or um, Southeast Asian countries. In this installment, I'm going to prove that not all pirates are made equal. Some pirates are just awful in both the games that they include and also their build quality. In this installment, the game is this one right here. This is K4076 4-in-1 Super. That's just fantastic. So there's four games in this cart and they are all fairly average to just terrible. But before I get into that, let's look at the cartridge itself. So what you're getting here is what looks like a standard Famicom game and looks like it's be, you know, fairly good with nothing on the back, no sort of English, so nothing nothing to really complain about there. Except for the fact that this is incredibly cheap plastic. This is the worst Famicom pirate I have ever seen, and I have quite a few of these. Um, for one thing, when I, as soon as I bought this, I didn't need, before I even like got it home, when I was just looking at it, I realized it's broken. The tabs on it are broken. So that's just the build quality right there. So let's open this up and take a look at this PCB because you guys will not believe this. So Famicom games are very small to begin with. They're basically the size of a Genesis game cartridge or a Sega Mega Drive game cartridge. But look at this PCB. Yeah. That is absolutely pathetic. This PCB is barely the size of just the pin connectors and then a glob top. On the back of it, there's there's nothing to it. There's, this weighs nothing. It weighs the the, the clamshell itself, the, the the plastic shell itself weighs more than the PCB does. And I I don't know. It's just pathetic. The only thing keeping it in place are these two little plastic tabs. So you know, with the, such brittle plastic, I hope they never break. And let's see. Try and put this back together again. Even though it's already broken. Let's see what I got here. Okay. Oh, that's great. It's cracked. Well, and it's broken there, too. Awesome. Well, let's try and put this in my Famicom and play some of these. First thing you'll notice, it actually won't actually go into a Famicom. That's right, the PCB um, is, is actually a little too thick for a standard Famicom game cartridge, so you need to really wham it in there. So they didn't even get that right. <clears throat> Alright, so let's turn this on and hopefully we'll be able to play it. Alright, so here's the boot up screen. So what you get here is King Series Super 4 and 1. Well, I'm glad it said King Series right on the label and not 4-in-1 Super. Alright, so you get four games here. Dragon Ball Z 3, Street Fighter 12P, Small Din Dung, and Arthur Robin. <sighs> Let's just play it from the best to worst. Arthur Robin. Able to read Japanese. That's this is a loop on the third game or loop on Senshi. First thing you'll notice is it's actually got a copyright date and a company that made it, except there are lies. This game was not made in 1993 and not made by Kokot Limited. So let's just play some of this. Um, so this is a loop on the third game. So let's play as loop on third. So you have three different characters here. It doesn't 
doesn't play terribly, but it's not that great either. Alright, enough of that. Let's turn it off. Small Din Dong. I know for that music, this is Doraemon. Now, once again, the information at the bottom of the screen are absolute lies. This game was not released in 1993, and not by any of those people that it claims it was. This game was instead made by Hudson in 1986. By 1993, the Famicom had far more advanced games than this, so I don't even know that why they would claim 1993. Anyway, let's play this. As it was released in 1980 and 1986, this is a very basic Famicom game. Basic in both the gameplay and visuals, and just everything about it. Famicom gamers would have been insulted if this kind of game came out in 1993. Unbelievable that they claim that. I can say about this game, it's, I don't know, it, it's, it's kind of okay, but it's not anything special either. Alright, let's move on. Street Fighter 12P. Believe it or not, this is a port of Street Fighter 2 to the Famicom. And believe it or not, it's not the only one. This is just one of them. This one doesn't even bother to give you who developed it. It apparently was developed by the year 1995. So, Fighter Street 6, 12 peoples. Excellent. So who are these 12 peoples? They're apparently Chun-Li, Ken, Guile, Alanka, um, E Honda, Ryu, and then clones of them. So really only six of them with alternate color palette version characters. So let's play as Ken, because I'm fairly good at, at with Ken in Street Fighter games. I know how all his moves, I know um, Ryu's moves too. But let's play as Ken. Looks promising so far. And then the actual game starts. I suppose it doesn't look that terrible. But the problem with this game is that the controls are garbage. This game does not control at all like a Street Fighter game. It in, in fact um, controls more like um, Yi or Kung Fu. Or um, I, I, I guess you could say, you know, really early fighting games. Or, or maybe similar to the original Street Fighter. You don't have any of the moves, um, like I'm continually trying to do, you know, the fireball, the Hadouken move, or the Shoryuken, or any sort of attack at all. The computer can execute them, but you can't. Like, I'm pressing, I'm trying everything I can here. I'm doing nothing, I'm just leaping up in the air and randomly kicking. The controls are so broken that this game is utterly impossible to play. Like, I don't understand how any game could be this broken. So let's try it with a different character. Because maybe it's just, um, maybe it's just Ken. Let's play as Chun-Li here, because I know Chun-Li's attacks too. Oh, 
okay then. Of course, the controls are just as broken with Chun-Li and every other character. Look at Ryu here. Look at this. I suppose the sprites represent the characters they're supposed to, but God, this game is awful. But I've saved the best for last. Or really, the worst for last. Dragon Ball Z 3. Now, actually, this is an original game that um, it was made um, by pirates and not actually based upon anything else. Um, it starts fairly promising. Um, this game apparently takes place, you know, during the Cell Saga of the Dragon Ball Z um, manga or anime. <sighs> Revel in that music. I remember that music from the anime. Alright. So there's a number of difficulties here, one to four. With one being the dumbest and four being impossible. So let's play it on two. One P something. I, I can't read the Chinese script here, but this is CP, that means must be computer. So let's play this one. So there's a number of characters. Um, that must be Young Gohan, Vegeta, Goku, um, wait, wait, who the hell? Uh, oh, that's, that's Trunks, or maybe? Um, Piccolo, Cell, Cell Jr., and whoever the hell that is. So let's play as uh, Goku here. Goku versus Cell. Perfect. So here, the controls aren't as awful as they are in, um, in in the Street Fighter game, except when you actually want to do anything in this game. Things just sort of randomly happen. It's kind of like a Smash Brothers that way. You press buttons and things happen. I, I really don't know what's going on here. I try and repeat certain attacks and they don't repeat. The game runs faster, but that music is... Oh my god! So... Although it kind of looks better, that sprite, um, that sprite glitching, because you can't really do fighting games on the Famicom, wasn't really designed for that. All I'm doing is I'm just randomly pressing buttons, and things happen. I don't know if there's special attacks, or if you can do special attacks. Okay, pause. Pause of the game. That, there's the one thing that is guaranteed. Okay, I have absolutely no idea how I did that. I'm literally just pressing buttons at random and trying to repeat patterns and nothing's coming up. I suppose it's a little bit better than the, um, the Street Fighter game, because that game is completely unplayable at all, but this game is random, so I don't know if that's better or worse. Well then, that's... yeah. So, once again, Here is King Series Super 4-in-1, or as the label claims, 4-in-1 Super. So Dragon Ball Z 3, uh, it's, it's not bad, but it's not good either. Street Fighter 12P is awful. Small Ding Dong is Doraemon, um, and Arthur Robin is uh, the loop on the third game. Push up down start button. 
Okay then. So, if you see this cart um, for sale anywhere, don't buy it because there are better multi carts out there, there are better pirates out there, and the games that this is our pirating are two of the worst games and two mediocre early games. So, considering there are multi carts out there with, you know, multiple dozens of games that are either mediocre or, or um, original or whatever, sometimes they can include games like Super Mario Brothers, which are amazing games, but, uh, you know, this one. I don't recommend. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next episode where I'm going to be showing off a multi-cart that is better than this um, and probably one of the best ones that, I've, that I own, period. Um, the thing about multi-carts is that you're, it's, it's always up in the air what you're going to get. It's, it's, sometimes you'll get good stuff, sometimes you'll get bad stuff. Next one is going to be such a mixed bag, but it's one of my favorite games I own. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Arthur Robin. Let's try this again. Why do my bullets disappear with three feet in front of me? Okay, this game is bullshit. Forget it.